Of all the tech I own, my iPad feels the most versatile. So in today's video, I'm walking you through my absolute favorite iPad apps, some of which I've relied on for years and some exciting new discoveries that have totally changed the game for me. Whether you're looking to streamline your workflow, get organized, or just have more fun, these apps are genuinely worth checking out. I think with the introduction of iPad OS 26, the iPad has never been more powerful. I think it's my most versatile tech tool that I own. In particular, I really adore all of the digital handwriting I can do with the Apple Pencil. It feels so natural to use and that combined with all the multitasking you can do with the new interface and how you can have multiple windows open at once. It's just such a functional and fun piece of tech to have on hand. The journal app was originally an iPhone exclusive, but it is now on iPad. And one of the reasons I love the built-in journal app is that I think it is one of the journaling apps that makes a lot of sense for adding context to your camera roll. So taking the photos and videos that you have and kind of curating a set of notes, jotting down standout memories from the day. It's like, sure, yes, you may think that the photos and videos are doing enough of the documenting for you, but there's always these little tidbits and in-between moments that don't necessarily get captured in a photo or video. And I love the fact that this gives me a spot to do that. And with the iPad app in particular, now I can use my stylus and turn this more into a journaling session. Whereas when I was just typing it on my phone, it felt a little bit less creative and scrapbook like. I love the fact that you can also integrate recorded audio. So you could actually, instead of even writing something, talk about the day for like 30 seconds or a minute, or even record in real time the moment that you are capturing to capture the atmosphere, the background voices, the noises, to really immerse yourself into that scene. Zinnia is one of the new journaling apps I've been experimenting with. And this app is really fun because there's so many different add-ins that are built in to the app for you to add into your journal to make it a little bit more creative. So I think this is a real great bridge between the creativity of paper planning and the functionality, the ease of digital planning. I did notice that the free version of this app is very limited in features, but I still think it's one that's worth downloading and experimenting with to see if it's worth the price for you. It's definitely convenient to be able to have all of these add-ins so accessible and built into the app, unlike with other journaling apps where I've had to look on Pinterest for things to decorate my spreads with. There's so much to play with here. And not only is there a lot to play with in terms of these add-ins, but there's also templates that you can use and resize to fit your needs. So if you are someone who wants to make a digital bullet journal, but doesn't want to do the boring line work every single week of like setting up the, the basic structure of the spread. There's such variety to choose from in terms of templates, especially in the paid version, but the free version does have that too. I know if I were still a student, I would love an app like this to be my planner because then I get to change up my planner each week, depending on what my needs for the week are. Freeform is an app that I talked about in my digital note-taking video, but I really do feel like it's an app that shines in particular on the iPad. So it's definitely one I wanted to note because this is such a great app to use for any brainstorming that you wanna do in your life for specific projects, especially those for work and school, but also projects in your life and things that you wanna work on, goals, habits. I know fall is coming up. So during the fall season, I like to make little mood boards and the Freeform app makes it super convenient to do that because the canvas is practically endless so you can separate all of the different topics of fall inspiration that you want but all still have it in one spot and I really love using scenes too so that you can easily go to different areas of your board especially when a board gets super large this can add a lot of organization and functionality to these big huge canvases. Procreate is an app on my iPad that I've been using for so many years. I love using it to doodle on my photos for my Instagram carousels. I like to add little notes and just give my carousels a bit more of a journaling look. Now on Procreate, you can take advantage of the built-in library brushes, or you can import other brushes that people have created. The one brush that I love using the most is actually one I bought off of Etsy. I'll have it linked in the description box below. I just love the texture of it. I also really enjoy using Procreate to make handwritten animations for my videos, whether it's for short form or long form content here on YouTube. That's what you're seeing me do right here. But I love using Procreate to do doodles as well, to color in digital coloring books like there's really so many things you can do with it and especially if you are someone who is more artistic who loves drawing painting these brushes in procreate look so realistic and I feel like if you are talented enough to know how to use them you can make some beautiful digital artwork 
my favorite things to do on the iPad is to create collages on Pinterest. I actually think Pinterest's collage feature is one of my favorite things about Pinterest and I don't feel like enough people talk about it or use it. So I wanted to highlight it in today's video because it makes creating vision boards, mood boards so much more engaging than just the traditional Pinterest board setup where you're just scrolling through a feed of images. With the collage feature, you can add in whole images, you can add in cutouts, and it comes together so quickly that you end up with this really beautiful, inspiring collage that you can either just use directly on Pinterest, but I like to, to go a step further and export my collages into images that I can use for backgrounds on my phone or my iPad background so that that inspiration is always top of mind in places that my eyes are constantly being met with. It's one of my favorite activities to do when I'm listening to a podcast or a really long YouTube video. I think one of the biggest obstacles to a work session is getting distracted and that's where I think a timer can be really powerful at keeping you on track. So I wanted to experiment with some time tracking apps. This one is flipped. There is a paid version but there are lots of things that you can do with the free version still like track what time you're spending on specific tasks so you can see how many tasks am I spending on editing in a week or how much time am I spending on writing outlines. There's also ambient sounds built into the app itself so you can put on some campfire sounds, some rain background noises just to fill the ear space of your work sessions. Fun fact, you can actually add a shortcut into your command center that allows you to turn on ambient sounds directly with your iPad so you don't need to download another app to do that. But that is cool that it is built into the timer itself. And there's also a Pomodoro timer, which is a popular time management technique for keeping you on track where you do 20 minute work sessions followed by five minute breaks. If you are someone who loves making to-do lists, then I think TikTok is going to be an interesting app for you to try out because it allows you to organize your tasks by urgency and importance. So what ends up happening is this long laundry list of to-dos that you may have for a given day can now actually be organized by priority so that you can get clear on what are really the essential things that need to get done, i.e. the most important and the most urgent. There's actually lots of different features in this app, including being able to create a countdown for notable events. It can be a notable event that's good, like a vacation, or maybe not so fun, like a deadline for work or school. And there's also another tab where you can keep track of healthy habits and customize how often those healthy habits are ones that you want to be reminded or prompted to do each day. And this is another app that has a built-in focus timer to help keep you on track with the timer. The interface is a little less stimulating than the other one, and you do need to have the paid version to take advantage of the built-in ambient sounds or the wide library of them, but still great to have in here. I talked a lot about paper in my digital note-taking video, so I won't spend too much time on this one, but paper is the app to use if you are someone who loves journaling IRL and loves the feeling of flipping through a journal. I feel like paper's really perfected how, how to translate that experience into a digital environment. I mean, like just flipping through this feels so much like you're flipping through a real journal, which if you have a journal, a junk journal, any kind of journal, that's kind of the best part about journaling getting to do that. So I think that's a huge perk to this app that I haven't really seen in many other journaling apps. It does have a lot less free features these days. It used to be better in the free department and now there's a lot more that gets unlocked with paid. But it is so unique that it is definitely worth noting and one that I would experiment with in the free version before ever committing to the paid just so that you can get a taste for it yourself. I've talked so much about GoodNotes before. It's still my favorite note-taking app with the stylus if you wanna do heavy note-taking and it's all because of the zoom in window. This zoom in window essentially zooms in to the full page and it tracks your handwriting so that as you're writing a full line of text, it will automatically understand where you are on the page and make it so that you don't need to move your spot on the paper to start on another line. Like it'll just automatically do it for you. That blue shaded area that appears is where you start writing to immediately shift over your zoom in box. So it sounds complicated. Once you start using it, it makes a lot more intuitive sense, but this is the feature that makes it so convenient to use. If you are writing tons of text, if you are in lectures and you just have to write fast, 
fast and not be paused by all these hand movements around the paper, this is the one to do it with. And then there's the added bonus of being able to use a ton of really fun tools and even download templates that people sell both within the app and on Etsy that can make your digital note taking a little prettier. My Mind is an app that is very new to me, but it is an app that addresses the issue that I think we all feel with the internet these days is that there's so much content that we are being faced with and it's almost impossible to organize it all or to have a system for making sure that the things that are interesting, that are high value for you in your life, that you actually are able to keep track of and used in a way that can be productive. So then when you open the app, you essentially are being met with the digital garden of all the things that you've sent to the app and you can either search your mind so you can search through all the content that you've saved that you think is relevant and have it all in one spot. You can categorize each piece of content with specific tags so it makes it easier to find things. Now I did do a whole video on how I'm using my notes app to do this so if this is an idea that piques your curiosity I highly recommend checking that video out to get a thorough understanding of like what your attitude should be in building a digital garden or building a second brain. But I am intrigued that this app was specifically designed to help address this issue. I have become such a Substack lover. I love this platform because it is a spot for me to consume long form written content. And there's so many creative takes that people have on here. And it's so fun to just find really specific articles on random topics that I don't think much about, but it's intriguing to get an insight into someone else's mind and how it works and I love doing this on my iPad specifically because reading articles like this is just nicer on a big screen versus my phone. It's my favorite social media app at the moment. Like if I'm going to doom scroll, I think of all the social media apps, it's probably best to do it on Substack because it's just a lot less stimulating than other platforms, but still such an inspiring space. Libby is an app that allows me to connect to my local public library and borrow ebooks and audiobooks and magazines directly to my iPad or to any device that Libby is on, my phone included. I love Libby in particular for audiobooks with my iPad because if I'm doing a work session where I want something to, you know, entertain me, but I don't necessarily want that visual component, there's so many audiobooks to choose from on Libby. Ebooks I typically read on my e reader, but this is also really great on the iPad for magazines and things that have more visual components because it just looks better on the iPad. If you have yet to hop on the Canva train, I don't know what you're waiting for because you are missing out on some incredible design capabilities for literally anything that you need to design. I'm always amazed by just how much easier it is to put creative things together these days in 2025 versus, you know, a decade ago, even when I had to rely on Photoshop and Lightroom a bit more. Now I dominantly use Canva on a desktop computer or a laptop, but it is actually quite good on the iPad, which is not always something that can be said for every app that has a website component. Like I think Canva is typically associated as canva.com, maybe not necessarily Canva the app. And on the iPad specifically, using Canva is so advantageous because you can use your stylus to add interesting doodles onto things like thumbnails or really anything that you're designing and give it that extra personal touch without having to waste time importing these doodles from other places like Procreate. Notes has a lot of great features. Again, this is one of those apps I highlighted extensively in my digital note taking video. Trust me, you're sleeping on the Notes app, but the Notes app on the iPad has the benefit of what? Yep, the Apple Pencil. And this is just so amazing for writing quick to-do lists, quick notes, things that you just want to jot down. And I love sometimes just doing that with a pen and paper. So being able to do it digitally is great. I'm trying to make a point to visit the New York Times game app a lot more regularly because there's so many great free puzzles on here like Wordle, like Crosswords, like Sudoku that help me use my iPad and just like any device in general in a less passive way. Like I often feel like I have these dumb moments where I question whether or not social media and the internet and doom scrolling has just fried my critical thinking skills. And that's not to say that these games are fixing that, but I think having alternative methods of entertainment on your devices can help create more opportunities where you opt for those rather than the more mind numbing things. And let me tell you, there's nothing more stimulating than a difficult game of Sudoku. Like when I get into it, I get into it. Taskflow is another app that the to-do list lovers are going to want to check out. I particularly love this someday section where you can keep track of to-do items that 
aren't necessarily today items, but things that you want to do in a week, in a month, or sometime in the future. Whether you're using Taskflow or a different app or system, I think keeping track of these longer term to do items is a real brain stress reliever. And I love the fact, though, that in this app in particular, you can create subtasks for any of the main tasks that you put on here so you can break them down into smaller, more achievable chunks. Meal planning, meal prepping, all of it can be really overwhelming. Like the fact that we have to feed ourselves three times a day, it's shocking how stressful that can be. But this app, Meal Lime, is an app that I was introduced to by a friend of mine who loved using this in their meal prep routine. You start by picking your recipes that you want to make for the week. A lot of them are pro recipes you have to pay for, but there is a lot of free options. And then once you pick your recipes, you can adjust your serving sizes and it will automatically then build to a grocery list for everything that you want to make for that week, which is half the battle of doing a large meal prep session. The instructions for the recipe are available for you. It's all in one spot, makes it super easy. Unlike the New York Times games, the brain training games are much more time sensitive. So you not only want to get these answers correct, but you also want to get them done as quick as possible so that it improves your score. And then at the end of the game, you see your score and how it compares to other people who have played the game. And I feel like it can really get you into a competitive spirit. This app really feels like it's sharpening my quick thinking skills in a way that the, the New York Times puzzles maybe don't do in the, quite the same way. But this is a little bit more, wow, I am stressed because I just want to do a good job and I want to do it quickly. So it adds a little spice to the brain training sessions. I really hope today's video introduced you to at least one new app to add to your iPad that you hadn't considered adding before. And I'd love to know in the comment section down below what is an iPad app that wasn't mentioned today or one that was that you can't live without that is such an iPad essential that changed the game for your relationship with your iPad. For me, those apps were definitely Procreate and GoodNotes. I discovered them when I was in university and it really transformed the iPad from being just a bigger iPhone screen to an actual device that had a very unique place in my tech setup. Like the video if you enjoyed it, hit subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss more videos like this and I will see you soon with a new one.